Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is your online coffee community that PhD, postdoc, and science professional can get practical tips, motivation, and peer support. If we haven't already met, I'm Vera Chan, and I'm here whenever you need a coffee break. Today, I hope to talk about something that many science lab managers absolutely hate. It's the painful visa process. It's more important than asking your advisor the question of what you will do in your research is first, how can you get here and how can you work here legally? If you are doing research outside of your home country, give this video a like and comment below where you're from and what are you studying in your research. Take note if you're trying to apply for PhD or postdoc. Story time. I graduated from Hong Kong for my PhD. I have transitioned to the United States and I worked there for four years in Clemson University, South Carolina. Go Tigers! I'm now living in Brest. It's the furthest possible point you can go to in France. One can never pass by Brest and you must come to us because we are near the ocean and nothing else. This is also the place where we live the most number of marine scientists in Europe, I think. In this video, I want to focus on my experience transitioning from the US to France. And I'll cover the timeline of my visa, what are something I would have done differently. And also I'd like to introduce you to the resource I found that is really useful for working in Europe with a visa. Advisors may be local and they may not have gone through the same experience. I really hope my personal sharing is going to help you and get you prepared for your next opportunity. When I got my first job offer for this position, it was in July. I started my contract in November. As soon as I got the job offer, my advisor asked Human Resource to contact me for a few documents, my transcript, CV, university and PhD certifications, the letters from my employment. The first barrier I've got was that I need my passport to not expire within the time of my visa. Let me just explain a little bit more. My contract is 18 months. And at that time, my passport expired in 2019 in May, and it's less than 18 months. Um, and I got into a huge problem because I was in America. I was renewing an H-1B visa at that time. And if I leave the country, I must make a new visa page. If I were in my home country, the process would have taken five working days. It turns out I mailed my application from a US embassy and I need to fly to New York for that. And it was a trip. It is a long process for six weeks. After six weeks, I got my new passport. I need to go back to New York in person and get my passport. So that's two trips um, all together just for my passport to be current. So lesson learned is you have to make sure you your passport date is way beyond your studies or postdoc time. So you don't run into the problem that you have to renew your own passport and you are not in your home country. But another thing that is not so straightforward was they needed proof that I defended on that exact date. For my university, the transcript only shows my date of graduation, that's 2014. Somehow in Europe, they are really particular about which date you have defended. So if you're a foreigner, make sure you find evidence to prove. For me, I had the luck to find someone who is still working in Hong Kong U and Jessie, thank you. She gave me my poster to prove that I defended in October 2013. So after preparing all the initial documents, my employer can write a document. It's called a hosting agreement. And it's not a contract, it's the hosting paper that uh, tells the immigration officers my role, my salary, and my duration of employment. And then with that document, I can apply for the visa, which in my case is a long stay visa. I had to go to Atlanta. It's a three hour drive from Clemson. Uh, to get an interview with the, with the officers. I gave my document of support and they would mail my package. About two weeks of processing and I was quite surprised in a good way that they did it so quickly. And I got my passport with the page that is with the visa by mail. So bear in mind that two weeks you can't travel without a passport. When I left the US and come to France, it was two days before my contract supposed to start. I had an appointment with HR and I have to sign before and I start by November 1st. My employment is 18 months. You still need to renew your visa 
on the 12 month mark. And for me, I need to be there um, 10, like two months before the expiry date of the first visa. That time I was surprised by two things. The first is that I need my original copy of birth certificates. And as a full grown adult, I am embarrassed to tell you that my certificate of birth is with my mother <laughs> and my mother still have it at that time. And she has to be posted to me and we were so stressed if it get lost in the mail. So I wish I knew that I would bring my passport, my all the certifications that belongs to me as an individual when I go to a foreign country to work. The second thing that surprised me is in France, they don't accept English documents. They need everything officially translated in French. And that's also mean accredited translator by the French Court of Appeal. So if you need to look for this translator, this is the word you type in Google to make sure you find the right one. Photocopies of all the passport pages with stamps and visa and writing on the passport. A copy of my own birth certificate with the originals that I had to speed post. Birth certification translated by those translator in French. Passport photos, of course, you need to be careful with the dimension that they specify. Copies of your employment. New hosting agreement. My HR have to learn that hosting agreement is different from a contract. Your address, you have to prove that you live in your current address, water bills or electricity bills. Your payslip, like meaning that you are still employed and you have money coming in from this employer. It's a whole stack of document and you will prepare for your interview. As soon as they approve that, they will take your case and they will give you a temporary renewal paper. And that paper allow you to travel out of the country, which I really am thankful. If I were in the US, I would have not got the luxury to travel out of the country while the visa is still being processed. As soon as I arrived in France, I lived in the temporary student residence for three weeks. I really wish I had thought about the inconvenience of finding apartment without any knowledge of French. Um, and I wish I knew to be more safe and reserve this temporary housing for one month because I ended up having to move with my two cats in a new hotel for one week um, because it, I didn't find the apartment on time. Traveling with cats is a totally different video that I need to make. Um, and moving to a hotel that allows pets is quite tricky. I could totally have saved money if I had um, planned ahead to know how realistically, how long I would have taken to find the place. So plan ahead with temporary housing with long enough time so that you will catch a breather when you arrive in a new country and get to know the neighborhood and pick the right place to stay. First three months of settling in France with a new address, the visa office will need to validate I literally live in this new apartment and they also ask me for interview to validate that I actually had the visa and I stay in this country and I show up to the appointment. When you start a new identity in a new country, does your bank account come first or the uh, phone number come first. Hi, I'm Miu here and I like to open a bank account and this is my work contract. Um, you go to have a phone number. Okay. Après, after, come back and we'll make, we'll make your bank okay. account. Okay. Hi, I'm new here and I like to create a phone number and this is my work contract and my passport my whole life. Do you comprend français? No? Oh, you, you need your bank account. Okay. Après, come back and we'll make your phone number. Where does it start? Je suis triste. <laughs> Um, there's one more point about driving in France. I had a US driver's license in South Carolina and I didn't know how lucky I am because there are only 13 states in America that include Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Pennsylvania, Illinois, New Hampshire, Michigan, Kansas, South Carolina, Kentucky, Delaware, Ohio, and Virginia. So this state has the freedom to convert the license 
but you must do so within the first year of your arrival. If you are only visiting France for 90 days or below, then you can feel free to use your driver's license and you don't need to convert it. But since I'm here for longer than 90 days, I'm obligated to change my license. And that comes to my next point is, I didn't have my utility bill from Clemson in May. They sent me a package before we had the lockdown and I need to figure it out how to prove that I exist in South Carolina. I'm really regretting now that I didn't keep the water bill. Part of the arriving uh, in France procedure, I also need to get a social security number so that if I get sick, I need to go to the doctor. I get supported by the healthcare. Um, as my benefit of working in France. It took 14 months until I actually get my social security number. Um, for my case it was exceptional. I think the normal timeline still will take a few months, but um, because they have lost my file, my institute has some social worker who help internationals and she's really helpful and helped me to write a letter to them and it was an experience that someone wrote a letter in french and you just sign your name to endorse that letter and i i was just thankful she didn't sell my kidney or something my point of making this video is not to complain if anything that taught me in this process is I have a lot of trust in humanity. It's a vulnerable process. You go to a new country, you have to set up your account, your first bank account, your first phone number and identity. In the process is scary, but it's also clarifying to, to realize there are people there that are helpful and all the copyings and taking all the hard copies and soft copies and original documents to the right person at the right time. I mean, I totally should put this on my CV, you know, like. I want to reduce your pain by introducing you to Eurexis because they are my lifesaver. And I didn't know they exist until when I renew my visa. They gave me the checklist and they're in English. You have to check the website. If anything you take out from my video is this website. They are totally free. If you're a student, your institution must already have paid for it. They're independent from your professor, so you can feel free to ask them any question related to your visa cases. There are 42 countries in Europe and more than 600 centers over Europe with URESIS network. So URESIS advise new arriving international researcher, um, individual case of residence permit, accommodation, bank account, health insurance, and even finding a school for your children in the neighborhood, your exchange of driving license, income tax declaration, career support and language classes, all the paperwork and question like, how does it work in France? So if you have any question, basically, before you go to Europe to start your first research experience, make sure you contact them by going to the website, learn about what is the basic information for your nationality, the passport that you're holding, and how does this uh, affect you to transition. They want you, a researcher, to concentrate on your research. You can ask any question related to your well-being coming to a new country and they are here to help, they do not judge. So they have a career center. For my case in Brest, they also have workshops on how to network, how to build your LinkedIn profile, how to write resume. You may not get all these professional development tips from your advisor or in your university. They are there also to help. Make sure to check with your nearest URESIT center to find out what are the professional development activities you can engage and improve yourself as a researcher. You need to start building for your career from the first year of PhD. Even you are far from graduating, invest 10% of your week, take four hours of webinars and workshop time just to brush up your skills. One hour at lunch each day is enough. And to think about how can I improve my Excel skills? How can I talk more professionally with people? And how can I write emails that are sounding less of a student and more of a working person? That's the idea actually also behind this channel of why I make PhD coffee time. If your institute don't have a professional development program, this is the place that you can connect with people who are like-minded. If you subscribe to this channel, you're taking the first initiative to improve your PhD. If you find my content helpful, 
Please make sure to share my video to anyone you think are going to benefit from it. You're doing them a service. It's about building a community that are willing to help each other and grow. Thank you for watching and I thank Uresis. They encouraged me to put together this content today. It's really an experience that we all have to go through and the more we make it transparent and the more we realize who are there to support us, then we can really focus on the science. Make sure you upload your CV to Uraxis. They linked job seeker and employers on the page. This is your homework before we go. If anything you take out from my video is this website.